Yeah. Well, since you getting hydrated, Rose, let me get hydrated too. You fancy too with the uh Costco waters? You know, that's out of that's out of budget. You know what I mean? That's you get about 12 of those, about ten dollars. So that's a good deal for me. My dog Costy fishing out here, Rose. We live, man, in case you didn't know that right now. Oh man, well. Shout out to them, you know what I mean? Shout out to them. Well, that's how we was gonna do it anyway with the fly New York Yankees hat on and everything. So man, I'm live in the fish, man. I appreciate you having me on, man. No doubt. Hey, you about ready to start this show, Rose? Because they they were actually asking for you, dog. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm like, I'm here. I'm here for them. I'm here for you. So whatever no, y'all need. No. Let's rock. Let's do right. it. DK, watch me start the show right here, real quick, man. Three, two. Welcome in to the Ramon Foster Show, man. One of my most favorite people in this world. Got a great spirit about him, man, first and foremost. You know, a lot of people say, man, that dude's a great guy. Like, no, nah, Rosie got a great spirit. Heck of a human being, a uh, heck of a player, and just a homie, man. I would say friend, but I feel like homie ties us in a little bit more, right? Man, I, I all of the above. I mean, I think, you know, I think about my relationship with you, I think of day one, I think of a big brother, I think of a mentor, I think of a, a OG in the game, you know what I mean? Put a lot of years down, so you got a lot of knowledge, man. I, you know, I've always soaked it up since day one, and I'm just yeah. I'm grateful to be here and talk to you today, man. For sure. You have, man. Rosa, they right. They they corrected me, too. Anytime I start the show, I got my bell I usually hit, man. Yeah. I, I didn't hit the bell, Rosie. I'm tripping. It's you mind bad. if I tap in? God, I am tripping. Don't change, bro. It up. Don't change it up. I know. See, that's what happened when you have the homies come on here, man. You, you look good though, man. How how the retirement treating you so far? Man, retirement, retirement has been good, man. Probably got a little bit of weight up off me and just been just really just enjoying life and the, the fruits of uh the labor that you know we, we, we built with football. That's what's up, man. Dude, you mentioned getting the weight off, dude. How about you guys down over 50 pounds now? I'm in there. I'm in there, Rosie. You feel, feel me? better though. Don't it feel I better? Do. You ain't feel what's better. so crazy. You don't even realize it until you like shrink like that. Yeah, you be like, I, for me, it was just eating. You know, I, I just was eating what was in front of me. You know what I mean? Because you always have. I had to just stop doing that. When I was hungry, I just had to just stop eating. You know, and just weight just kind of slim right off. That <laughs> yeah. yoga, you know what I mean? Got the knees feeling good. So what got me man uh and i drank water like all the yeah. time but like the amount of water i'm drinking now and yeah. just taking out some carbs taking out some sugar the yeah. inflammation has been way down just yeah. to get up out of the bed unless it's just one of those like late nights you know what i'm saying where you just cry like i'm an early morning dude anyway because my day job but like getting up out the bed ain't what it used to be especially when i was playing <sighs> Well, I don't know. I know. I know. I know for a fact getting out of the bed when I was playing was tough. <laughs> you know, I do know that. But now, I mean, you know, it's just a blessing, right? You know, we went through so many injuries and stuff. Like, yeah, I was just so much lighter, and you know, things that the activeness that we need is just you don't. We don't have to be that hard on our joints now, and it's, it really is. It's actually just a new way of just life, really, honestly. It really is, man. That's man. I got a format, but of course, when we link up, the conversation go where it goes. Okay, so we just gonna roll that route real quick, Rosie. Yeah. I'll say this: when I got that call, dog, from um, when I got that call from Mister Rooney, I mean, we all talked about it, Coach T. Kev. Yeah. My initial just understanding of it all when I knew I was done, they knew I, we were yeah. we were here. I, I got off the phone and I sat there for a second, Rosie, and I was just like. I can finally breathe. Mm. I went, whoo. Like, it was interesting, man, because I didn't realize how much stress, yeah. how much on you got to be to yeah. be a professional athlete. What was it like for you? Well, like, were you were you upset? Did you Could you feel like you could breathe a little bit? Like, where was you at? Now, I know mine may be a little bit different because I went, like, 11, and you went, yeah. what, six, seven? So one thing I think that is, is, is definitely the truth with that is, that there is no, you know, there is no specific way to feel, right? There is no, and first and foremost, there is no, you know, your situation was the same as mine, right? Like, I was not drafted. Said, 
You know what I mean? Like, and, and even for anybody else, you know what I mean? Like, there is no two NFL stories the same from the beginning to the end, and definitely not the end. Right. You know what I mean, so for you, you know, you guys were there, and me not so much with the bird. You know what I mean? So I was more surprised, surprised and shocked, and you know, uh, you know, on to the next. We just got to operate. That's how. That's how yeah. I do. It was just like we got to figure it out. And when I went to Indy, um, that was right as COVID had started up, so it everything was, was online, and uh, everything was just different, man. And I was going through some things personally um, that just timed up right around, you know, getting cut from Pittsburgh. So, you know, I had I had a lot of things going on. I just when I went to Indy, man, it just wasn't the it wasn't the Berg. It wasn't, you know, it wasn't what I was used to. And not to say the people there weren't great or anything, but that combined with just the personal, you know, like yeah, uh, stuff that I had going on. It was just, you know, it was a lot. And, you know, I tried to do that. And when I was done, you know, when I really realized that, you know, Pittsburgh was different and I was done, I was done playing football. Yes. Then I got that, you know, that breath, that, that, that easement, you know what I yeah. mean? Understanding of what my career was, and but uh, it it wasn't until you know I was truly done, like st- trying to fight and get on another team, and yeah, and, and, and go that way. I still had a little bit, but you know, once once it didn't work out in Indy, I just really just was like, man, I'm not just going to continue to just you know prove myself you know what I mean? yeah like, I'm proving myself to the highest of the highest you know like the best organization you know in the national football league so you know how we got down you know what i mean my yeah. resume is, is the film so we we don't need to explain to anybody or, or anything when we when we decided we were done you know what i mean yeah so now i definitely feel that 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 sense of like you know nobody's looking at me nobody's like nobody has this this opinion or there is no upstairs on my life you know what i'm saying yeah. there is no upstairs on the building where you know people are tracking but they're not tracking you know what i'm yeah. saying everything is everything is slow motion like it's it's, it's solid man it's that's solid. that's interesting hearing you talk i know you're in a really good space uh in general and i see your moves too man even if we ain't speaking every day we understand the vibes yeah. right and it's yeah. interesting you say that about um you say that about like guys like chasing it like yeah. a lot of guys have a hard time letting go of the nfl too rosie yeah, yeah. right like i've I seen think- it and, and and once again, I, for me, I'm truly a believer in no two stories are the same, right? No. So I I always go back to my story was different, right? You know my story. So you know coming out of coming out of college and doing all that, and then uh, getting an opportunity with the Atlanta Falcons and getting cut, and then having to be a substitute teacher for a year. You know, I was already at that point in my life. Like, damn, I just want to play football. Like, I'm in my mom's basement. I'm fighting. I'm scratching. I'm begging. For the opportunity to work out to make a team and then you know god put his favor on me and blessed me with the opportunity to to, to work out with with pittsburgh and i ended up turning that into a career so the whole time i was in pittsburgh you know i i operated on such like this is on on borrowed time anyway right this, this ain't really a real lifestyle you know what i mean like, <laughs> i call it fantasy land you know what i'm saying and honestly you know i went and, and coming from being a substitute teacher and seeing that paycheck and going to the National Football League, you know what I mean? That is a, you know, that's a that's a dramatic change that will really put it in perspective. Like, you know, a lot of this stuff ain't what it seems to be. No. You know what I mean? So you got to keep it tight. And especially knowing that I had already been took from me once, mm-hmm. that, you know, it could be taken away anytime again. Yeah. I really was trying to tighten everything up and make sure all the buttons, you know, were in the line. So that's, that's funny you say that, too, because that's how your name got brought up yesterday. Uh, mm-hmm. Someone asked the question, man. Uh, we do the segment called Hey Moan. All of this is going to be the Hey Moan or Hey Rosie, okay? You'll see yeah. comments pop up here. Uh, and and it went like this, Rosie. It was like, man, how how hard is it for a guy that comes from college just the big fish or the big man on campus and have a hard reality moment or can't fit in? And I'm like, man, that happens all the time. But for the ones that are mentally strong, and we we throw that word around a lot, Rosie, yeah. like being mentally strong, right? And right. I think our perspectives are about the same because we're undrafted dudes. Like, hey, we didn't get drafted. So, of course, we're mentally strong if we made it. But I was telling them, I was like, man, dudes got to figure it out. Like the ones that wash out, 
crash out sometimes. What I like to say is the ones that quit on themselves. They can't yeah. sustain. And I was like, man, Rosie was a substitute teacher. Like, yeah. that's what you had to do when I, it got snatched away from you. What was that process like of being told, no, I know the hard knocks conversation come yeah. up often with you, bro. What was that, that, that transition of that period of time like for you? Man, it, it was honestly super dark. Honestly, it was super dark and it was, it was very public. Like you said, I was on hard knocks. So, you know, everybody and their mama that had HBO or, you know, still an HBO or whatever, <laughs> watched it. you know what I'm saying? Got to see me, per, you know, a real traumatic experience in, in a, a young, a young man's life, you know, it, it happens all the time. So, you know, um, but, you know, at that point in time, I've just felt like, man, it's always me. Like, like you said, like, it's just, all, it's always like, why does it always got to be so hard? Feel that. Or, you know what I'm saying? Like, what, what why that. is that? And it wasn't a, it, you know, it's always, you know, God gives it to his toughest soldiers. So that's the approach, you know, I was born with and, and, and brought up on. So for me, it was never an issue of quitting. It was always an a issue of aligning myself. Yeah. You know what I mean? Aligning myself with the best opportunity to never be quitted. You know what I mean? Right. So I knew that my accolades and my, my my statistics, you know, I was all American defensive tackle. I, I know. I, you know what I mean? I knew that by going and playing fullback first, I would have an opportunity to at least show someone something in linebacker type skill. So if I went fullback first, I probably, you know, chances is I'm an athlete. I'm, of course, I think I'm going to make the team or whatever. But, right. You know, I just never lost faith, but it was super dark. And, you know, I just, I, you know, I'm a realist too at the end of the day. So I'm graduated college. I don't have a job. I'm in my mom's basement. You got to do something to get out of your mom's and what's, what's cold, Rosie, your story is probably more familiar to a lot of guys because mine wasn't in my mom's basement. Like I got my yeah. signing bonus. My joint was $88,000, like mm -hmm. almost five grand afterwards. I had a kid. I had an apartment. Like, I'm really piecing together how I'm gonna pay for daycare, rent throughout yeah. the summer. So similar situation, except you went back home. I, I had to go back home, man, and, and 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 I was working out at the stadium. And you know, when you treat people good and you have a good resume, right. and, and your face is clean in all areas of your life, you know, I was working out at my high school, just trying to wait for the call. You know, I'm out there running <laughs> by myself on a track, and one of my old teachers, you know, it was the AD at the time, was like, you know, hey. I know you're home right now. I know you graduated. And, uh, you know, we're looking for some substitute teachers to put some money in your pocket. You know what wow. I mean? In the meantime, between time, you know, and, and we could work something out. Like, I was like, let's do it. You know, I didn't know nothing about teachers, but I knew I could relate. And at the time, I was what? I was only, you know, five, six years older than these, these kids in high school. I just yeah. graduated college. You know what I mean? <laughs> At this time, I was just like, "Hey, I gotta, I gotta figure something out because I'm, I, I I've seen it, I've touched it a tiny bit, yeah. you know, I've been around it, so I know that it's, it's capable." And uh, I, I never really lost faith, you know. It got cloudy and it got dark, absolutely. I but I, I had, I had faith in, in, in my God and, and my family and the way I was living my life. You know what I mean? So what? Well, riddle me this, and I feel like you said something when we played them, but like that public display of you getting cut. Like yeah. by the Falcons. I didn't even realize. I watched it and didn't know it was you at the time. You feel me? Yeah. Like you were the yeah. first guy. A lot, people, a lot of people, a lot of people, I think now more so than ever, a lot of people be like, man, work was like, no way that was you. But I think that <laughs> yeah. was you. And I'm like, yeah, that was me. You know what I'm saying? Like, but they be like, well, what happened to that, that year in between? I'm like, man, I was a teacher. You know, like I, wow. was, I was, I was out. I was really out. You know what I mean? So. I think now, you know, that HBO, that Hard Knocks now, you know, I can appreciate it because I'm a fan of the game. Right. Um, some of it I feel like, you know, you know, you have to show. But I, I do think that is some traumatic experience. Because you it's know you I mean? it's on film. Humility yeah. at the same time. So I feel for the guys that's doing that. But there's it's no different than. The, the shows on Netflix, you know, the Juco, the, yep. the, the, those Last shows. Chance You. You know what I'm saying? Just showing the real struggles and people's entertainment, but as it's good as it's bad, I don't, I don't, I don't, I mean, I'm glad that it was me. You know what I mean? I'm glad that that's part of my story now that I look back at it. But you're right. You know, people do notice it and, and, and I enjoy it. And I, and I enjoy it just knowing that I came from that. You know what I mean? Yeah. I got some, some type of proof of that. You know what I mean? 
Yeah. Uh, with, with that being said, though, man, like seeing guys come in and out of the league, uh, unappreciative of the opportunities. Like, yeah. does it irk you a little bit? Because it did with me. Like, I saw guys come in and just really uh, not take advantage, Rose. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Or just have uber amounts of talent. And just in any position, any particular person, I'm not specifically going to anybody, but where were you yeah. at on that? Which is why I was gravitated towards you. Yeah. Because I, I saw I, the. I had already, can't, like, like, like me being at the crib for a year, I had a whole year to really understand, yeah. like, oh, if I get the opportunity, this yeah. is what I'm going to do. I'm going to watch these old guys. I'm going to learn from these old guys. I'm going, you know. It didn't take me long to realize, oh, you know, the older guys is in there at six at 5:30, 5 o'clock. Even though they in here just doing rehab and stuff, they still practice like that needs to be stuff I'm trying. I need to be doing that. Hey, because I've never seen it done before. Yeah. And these people have success. You know what I mean? And success leaves clues. Yeah. And coming from coming from Kent, you know, we weren't really fortunate enough to have a lot of guys. Like I was growing up, I didn't really have a lot of guys in the league show me or tell me about, you know, rehab and you know what I'm saying? Like all that type of stuff. So everything for me at that point was an opportunity to learn and grow and be a better professional and yeah. just take every piece of part of somebody's game that I could. And when I came on the team, my rookie year, I mean, we had legends, you know what I mean? Like we had yeah. super legends. I mean, we had Heath Miller and Timmons and Will Gay, Will yeah. Allen, Moan, you know what I'm saying? We had we had D'Angelo Williams was a 10-year vet. You know what I mean? Just <laughs> yeah, like James will. Harrison. Just, you know what I mean? Like yeah. guys, like Pounce, like, you know, like just obviously Pounce and, and Ben, but, you know, like, but we had just people that you could really learn from. And it's almost silly if if you didn't realize what opportunity you have, you know, because so many people are thirsty for it. No doubt, Rose. We're going to take a quick break real quick, man. And we're going to come back with all Hey Rosies, man. So you get your squig of water. And we're going to rock out real quick. So give me a second, man. At DK Pittsburgh Sports, we take pride in coverage that connects our city's fans to their favorite teams. Now that connection's stronger than ever. Introducing our all-new state-of-the-art app. Find expert inside reporting and original podcasts. Check live box scores. Track the latest stats. Chat it up with our community of thousands of fans all in one place. The new app from DK Pittsburgh Sports coverage that connects my guy rosie man hey look i'm gonna take the first one because this one's on me so we we call this section hey moan today is hey rosie okay so hey rosie how come you didn't put on display more in pittsburgh and across the world first time freshman player of the year and freshman all conference too man at the at, at kent state and you also got all conference four years in a row Dog, what were you doing to them? Um, man, I, I, there was a lot to that question. So, what was, <laughs> what was, what was the, what the first want? one? You won pl defensive player of the year, your freshman year, and yep. got freshman of the year. Yeah, first, first time in the MAC. First time in the MAC, and the MAC ain't no slack, okay, at all. No, James no. Harrison came from the MAC, correct? He from Kent. Yeah, he went to Kent and he, too. And he went to Kent too. He never did this. Uh uh. Rosie, what were you doing, man? You were like a Tasmanian devil. Man, I just, you know, it just worked. You know, I, <laughs> I just, you know, I didn't, I had to, I had, I was fortunate enough to really, my freshman year, I didn't start any games. Man. Okay. I didn't even start. And I got these awards. You know what I mean? Like, I came in, I was literally the eighth man on the roster in college. You know what I mean? And I was just in the second rotation. And we used to get, in and late late in the game for where I, I mean i had obviously had ability but you know by when it was my time to shine my, i knew i was getting limited reps i knew it yeah. I, I absolutely knew that i was only gonna get a couple reps but every week i just made it my mission to 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 get a sack or two a game you know what i mean and that's crazy i just i just i just really put my mind to i, I made a go like i'm gonna be the, like you said earlier, the big fish in this little school, and this is what's going to be. No questions about it. But, like, uh, uh, just, just to follow it up real quick, because that's serious. Like, as a freshman player, defensive player of the year, like, what were the older heads saying to you, man, at that time? Because, again, Kent State is no slouch of a school. Y'all have been dogs for a long time. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, you know, I just think that I was able to, to I'm always, I, you know me, I'm a guy that is very like, you know, likable. I'm very like yeah. you know, very myself, you know, I'm very like, you know, cool and laid back. So when it's, I'm never in your face, I'm never going to really do you like that unless you do me like that. But, you know, I'm easy to get along with. And if I show you like, this is what I do. I play football. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like Believe that. You know what I'm saying? So just believe when if I'm on the field, you know, I don't know what it's going to look like. I don't know how it's going to come about, but I'm going to make a play and we're going to be in the game no matter what. And Absolutely. that was my approach. Like, I used to be like, oh, if I play D-line, I can control this game. Like, yeah. I, I feel like I can control the game from the three technique. Um, And, you know, even carrying that to the league, like, I just feel like if I'm on the field, we have a chance. We're going to make a play. You you see this one up here from Andre Anderson. Hey Rosie, you remember when you thought you had the first down on the fake one? <laughs> hey, you know what? I just talked to Danger about this the other day. Dangerfield. Danger. By the way, that's DK's guy. If you Danger. ever mentioned Danger, Danger, man, he Danger. loves it. Danger. Danger. Well, I, I can't blame Danger. I was too charged up. It was it was what it was. You know what I mean? It's like, you know, I heard people clapping or something like you got it, and I'm like. Even though we, I even though I knew something was funny because we practiced it the whole week and that dude never went in motion with me. And then that one time I went in motion, he came. I said, "Oh shit, oh, we got a problem." <laughs> <laughs> it's like we got a problem, and, and that ball snapped. And I was like, "Man, we gotta get it." And you know what? It was. It didn't work out. You know? Man, everybody got a moment like that, and, though, man. You know, like, hey. It's a couple times you got, you know, you're either going to be the windshield or you're going to be a bug. You know yeah. I mean? no, no doubt about it. That is hilarious, That's man. a nice little meme. You know what I mean? <laughs> but J. Cole made me feel better. That's when that bar came out about people making beans or people making millions. So yeah. I was, I was just like, <laughs> I was like, yeah, what he said, you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. Make myself feel better, you know what You I mean? got to make yourself feel good, man. Yeah. This one comes from Merlin. He said, hey, Rosa, what's your favorite memory of, of a block you laid down? You remember, man, one in particular? My favorite block that I ever laid? You talk yeah. a lot of trash, too. That's it. When you were yeah, in your groove favorite, doing that. My favorite blocks is probably the ones where I'm on kick while I was on kickoff, you know what I'm yeah. saying? Like kickoff return. So like when I was that back line and you know what I'm saying, lighting people up, you know what I mean? Yeah. That's what I liked it back there. Yeah, no doubt about it, man. I saw this one be asked earlier, dog. Let me find it real quick, Rosie, because yeah. this was very unique, man. Uh it was this one. Uh, I'll get you in a minute. Oh, you can go ahead, uh, Pittsburgh side. She said, "Hey, Rosa, who's your biggest practice foe?" I'm my Cam. Hated Cam in practice. Cam, who, who my biggest who, practice foe? Probably was. You know, I I really had issues. I mean, obviously, when I first got to Pittsburgh, Vince was the top dog, the big hitter on the team. Oh my god! And, and me and him got it on quite often. Uh. We got it on quite often, but my problem was usually the younger linebackers. You know yeah. what I mean? The ones who don't know how to practice that for the last three years have been told to just kill the fullback. You know what I mean? And this is practice. And I'm like, I used to have to tell some of the guys, like, Yo, you're not going to make the, the team by trying to punish me. In the hole, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, we can't just be trying to blow up the ISOs like that, bro. Like, <laughs> Yeah, I used to. I used to have to. Them was probably my. I used to hate when I used to have to go up against the younger linebackers that really didn't know how to practice. You you say the same thing as I do because like when you're in that service role role like O line fullback blocking tight end Mm -hmm. like you legitimately have a a understanding of like this dude is just a fool and he's trying to abuse me. Vince was that way early with me too. He was a young linebacker at the time. By the time you got Vinny. He was like he was calming down all yeah, he was man. calming down. He was calming down. And we and we and you know it got so bad between us that Coach T came to us one year, pulled us in the room, and was like, you know, I don't want y'all hitting no more. He told like, you never, this. Never never hit again in practice. Oh. He said, never hit again in practice. Y'all let somebody else get work against y'all. Oh, that's serious, man. I yeah, told yeah. you. That was probably and 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 that was probably my second or third year in. So y'all was just getting it for yeah. I mean, it was I, I just like it. 
it wasn't like it wasn't like it was like you know we had any ill will. I mean, we was practicing hard. And I wasn't giving up, and he wasn't giving up, and but I didn't really have much of a playbook, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> so like my plays, everybody kind of knew what was going on. So I was like, you know what, we just gotta have to get down then. Yeah. And, and the troll one day, Coach T was like, I see y'all, y'all both came to camp ready type, you know what I mean? And that was a year we had a real good year, you know. We yeah. had a lot of good years, but we had, you know, he was like, I see y'all both ready, you know, we don't need no collisions like what y'all are capable of doing so you know that was that, definitely you know Vinny Vinny and me got some contact for sure yeah Vinny he he's in my wheel box too him Cam to it is in that wheel box yeah you had some you had some men you had some beasts down there yeah Shazier was even sneaky at times though too to, to me he was too fast he was like it, it was that know, but when he caught you it was like come on man you don't even hit like that in practice, yeah. uh, Brian Weaver asked a question. How did that TD against the Ravens feel? We celebrated so hard, Rosie. Man, the Ravens TD, man, that was – I think that was my first – I think that was my first TD. Yeah. I think that was my first touchdown. And like I said earlier, like, you know, I'm not I – don't, I don't mean to be cocky at all, but you know what I mean? Like, when I feel like I'm on the field – I got an opportunity to make a play. Like, that's just what I that's what I do. So when I seen Ben scramble out, I was like, oh, it's time. Like, it's time for me to show out for everybody. Like, and sure enough, he threw it. I caught it. And I it was no surprise to me or mine. Yeah. You know what I mean? It was just like we uh, we we do what we gotta do. We need that. You know what I mean? I'll, I'll never forget realizing it was you, Rose. <laughs> I was so friggin' hyped, dog. Yeah. You, you were the extension of us. No question. No question. That's why we always went crazy. I got y'all hanging up right here yeah. in, my, in my office. What's, what's cold, oh. though, too, is Ben used to, like, mess with you a little bit on the pass and yeah, stuff. He did. He did. <laughs> what, he did. What, what, what was it back and forth like? Because Ben is a slickster, man, and y'all yeah, both ben, from Ohio, Mac yeah. dudes, and here he was controlling your fate on catching uh, footballs, dog. Man, Ben, it was never – it never – me and Ben relations, people ask me that all the time. Do that. Like, what, what is you and Ben like? I'll be like, bro, you know, like me and Ben was solid. Like, you know yeah. what I mean? We was solid. Like, even though it was very much a relationship where, like, you know, obviously, like you said, he's a silly dude. You know he what I mean? Is, kinda like, man. Kind of like a little bully or something like that. But <laughs> it was never like harmful or nothing. Like it was, it was very much a, a friendly relationship. And like you said, we definitely had a back and forth type of a funny relationship. But you know, when he, it was, it was always to the point where he knew he could trust me, though. Too. Yes, you know it was. I mean? so, and I think that was very much a relationship with a lot of people on the team with me, like. Ben knew he could trust me. He would have never thrown that ball in the first place. You know, you know no. how smart of a football player he was. But, you know, it, it takes time to, to build a relationship with a quarterback. And I think, you know, my relationship coming from not knowing offense at all, right. like one bit to, to having that as my quarterback and him being there for the whole journey with me, it was it was great. Like that was that was, was a luxury for all of yeah, us. Yeah, it, it was it was a it was a good it was a good relationship. You know, he's a good dude in my life. So no doubt about it, man. Ryan Lytle asks, hey, Rosie, how excited were you to make the Pro Bowl? We were geeked for you, dog. We, yeah, it was it was beautiful. That was a that was a, a beautiful experience for me and my family and my grandparents. Got, everybody got to go and just be around. Just so many just high caliber, just men of the game. And, you know, have all the team. That year we had the coaches there, too. So it was just a it was just a beautiful experience. It finally felt like. I had made it somewhat. I wish, honestly, I would have enjoyed it more. Because really, why did first, you enjoy it? I'm so I'm so like aggressive with the football. I felt like as a as an alternate, I felt like I still should have earned it. Ah. But, but then, as I as I grown, I really started to cherish it more. But at, like the first couple, I was just like, "Man, I'm an alternate." You know what I mean? Like, damn that. I mean, yeah, for sure. But that tell you where I was at. You know? Yeah. I mean? Okay, I feel yeah, you. First, we just got smashed by the by was the, the Jags. Jags. The Jags. 
You know what I'm saying? And I'm waiting. I'm watching the game, waiting for somebody to figure out. I'm like playing with my fate. You know what I mean? Yeah. So it was a it was a mixed emotions, but at the end of the day, having my family around, you know, had being celebrated. It was all and truly one of the most blessing, you know, the beautiful thing yeah. that could have ever happen. One of the most beautiful things that happened with my football career. Absolutely. I'm just telling you the space. Like when it first happened, I was just like, we'll see what how it goes. You know what I mean? Yeah. But it was never a feeling of like being an alternate or, you know, nobody not respecting you. That was just me, like, you know, just playing. Yeah. With you know what You're I mean? sicko like that mentally. That's what you that know, is. You know, you know, but I definitely came to cherish that moment truly and understand what type of work and, and ethic it, that 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 takes. And, you know, it was just a super growing moment in my career. And I'm just so thankful for that and the fans and everybody. That's crazy that you say that, because before we go to this next question from B, feel like a lot of folks ask that question, Rose, like, what does it take to be a, a pro athlete? Like, what what is it like it? You, how many athletes you met that you were probably better than you, but don't have that mindset? Like, okay, that's cool, but it's not good enough. Um, I, I, I've met, you know, my college, my roommate in college was a bit way. He, he should be playing right beside me. Yeah, you know what I mean. He, I, I always told him, like I tell him now, like bro, you was the reason who pushed me through college. Like I, right. I thought I was competing. You know what I mean? Yeah. You, you didn't take it as serious as I did. You know what I mean? Mentally and, and things of that nature, but that's. You know, I think that goes back to just having that dog in you, right? Like yep. having that that willingness to just to just do it, to just get it done and have a go and do it. And I never shied away from that at any moment. I knew I wanted to play. I knew what I wanted to do. So it's just dedication is what just got me through there. You know? And whatever it was going to take, man, definitely. Uh, from B Field, man, he goes, hey, Rosie, what are your thoughts on some teams not valuing a good fullback on the roster? Uh, like you at all like what is that do, do you get into that I don't I don't I don't really get into the fullback battle I think there's benefits to it uh, I don't know if the game has gotten to a point where there knows some teams don't value one roster spot for, <laughs> for that. but I, I mean I guess it does too at the same time you know in the NFL and you know just frequent using like I think if you have a guy like juice check or you know, you have a guy like me that you could put in there, or, I mean, or owe me, or, you know, there's great fullbacks in the league that are not only, you know, fullbacks, but utilized in so many other ways that their, their position is essential. Right. So I think as long as you provide some value and, and uh, an essential piece to the team, I don't see why there shouldn't be a fullback on the team. But I understand that some offenses can put a lineman there, a linebacker, whatever, tight, tight end. end. You know what I mean? And get the same job done. So it it, it really, it, you know, six in one hand, half a dozen in the other in my eyes. Like, right. I respect the position and I, I respect the teams who don't as well. Uh, man, they own you about your hat rolls. You know, the Pirates finally doing good. So you got to deal you with send it. Me the hats. Send it to me, man. Pittsburgh <laughs> ain't send me nothing. <laughs> you know, send it to me. I'll come out there to the game. Yeah. Matter of fact, I'm going to be up this fall, man. You went back last year or did I you? I went back last year, man. It was beautiful. You know, like, uh, I think I, I try to tell like a lot of the guys that we play with, I mean, go back and get some of that love. Yeah. Go back and get some of that, you know, because I, I thought I don't need to go back, like you know what I mean. Like, I was the same way. I, I don't need to do that, and you know, actually, Chin, you know, is a a, a a big point in just trying to get me back and stuff. But you know, we got real fans. Yeah, you know, we got real people that really. We got a lot of people that don't care, but we got a lot of people that really do. You know, enjoy the game, enjoy what the entertainment that we provided. So, uh, I, I went back and got some of that love, man. It was good. It was good. It, to see is. Guys. it was good to, to see everybody, and you know, people are busy. It ain't like yep. they can't think about us or nothing like that. But you know, when you see someone and you haven't seen them, and it's genuine love, you know, it, it feels good. It Going does, back and talking to the chefs, yep. you know, everybody like Norwick. that. Norwick. Yeah. So it's 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 a it was a beautiful thing, man. You should do it. Let me know. I, I'll slide back up. They need you in that P hat, Rose. We're gonna get you that P, man, for sure. Man, they need it to him. Give it to him. Send it to him. Send and they the winning eight. right now. And they winning right now. I like that's rare. The Rose, you know. Let's see the Rose. Let's see that. Uh this one from Boomer H, man. Hey Rose, this is interesting. I never asked you this. How did you get the opportunity to go from teacher back to the field? 
What, what who who initiated that? Where where was that conversation started? Man, I, I so I was teaching. Uh, I remember like the back of my head, I was teaching. I'm in that space of it's, it's, it's dark, it's gray. I don't, I, I'm working out. But I don't know why. You know what I mean? Yeah. Excuse me. But um, New Year's is about to come up. You guys were playing the Ravens yeah. at the time. Yeah. And it was waiting for futures. And I didn't have an agent. I fired my agent. I'm like, for oh, what reasons? I'm Just because like, I should be playing somewhere. I mean, you know, I'm at that place. You, know what you mean? got I'm mad. Like, you was mad. mad bro. I, if you can't find me a job, you know what I mean. I'm boom. So <laughs> I'm sitting there. My old agent calls me. I'm making plans for the, the new year. My yeah. old agent calls me. He's like, "You've been working out." I'm like, "What kind of question is that?" Of course. <laughs> and uh, he's like, "Yeah, Pittsburgh want to try you out as linebacker." And I'm like. Bet say less. I knew I was gonna get a chance to play linebacker. Okay, just because of my defensive accolades, I knew I was gonna get a chance to work out, and I knew that I had been working to be able to showcase enough to get an opportunity to play. Even though yeah. I was still gonna have to learn, I still knew that I was capable. Right, and I knew that it was just time. And I went to to try out. It was like a couple guys on tryout. Uh, and and um, I, they they signed me. They signed me to a futures for linebacker. For linebacker, I didn't realize they, this. They signed me to a futures. I went through the drills, you know, hands, you know, everything, good feet. You know, it was cold. Uh, they signed me to linebacker. I did probably like OTAs. I did everything linebacker until like a week before rookie mini camp. And right. that's when Coach T came up to me and was like, "I want to try you at fullback." Straight in the locker room, came right to me like, Rose, I want to try you at fullback. I want to see what you can do. You did that in Atlanta, right? I'm like, yeah. I'm like, oh. right, here we go. Like, here we I'm go. on offense, you know what I mean? But at, at that time, I was just like, you know what? I was like, I'm here. I'm already in the building. I was like, forget it. You know what I'm saying? Oh, Let's yeah. Do Let's do it. It can't be too much. There ain't really a, a playbook for it. The guy was sacks, and we kind of built out the playbook from there. I mean, honestly, I was grateful enough to to put a lot of my play on, on 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 special teams at that time but that's how that went i i just i i went and tried out they told me they was going to sign me had a spot for me during camp i t told the school that i was uh gonna go do I, I gave put my two two weeks in and i went and trained it twice a day every day until training wow. camp. and uh and that sort of a calendar year you were right back at it right back i was right in the troll that next training camp so this time around, you or you were like, okay, well, uh, the offensive side didn't work. I'm going straight defense at this point, which is why you was working at linebacker. Well, I was really still working as an athlete, knowing that I had just signed as a fullback. I, okay. I could play either. I'm thinking in my head, I could play either, but I never really got to showcase defensive talent. Right. Tackling it and being able to control the game. You did, did, did they ever tell you why fullback? Was it just solely Atlanta? My size, oh. my size. I was a bigger. I was, you know, I was, I was bad. I had a weird body. You know, what big I mean? athlete. I wasn't, I wasn't the fastest. You know, what I mean, I was just a hybrid athlete. Honestly, like I just really just don't have no. I was just, you know, I was just look like this. Really, he was just an athlete. Yeah, just what it was. Honestly, right. there's no way better to explain. I think like when I tell people that, that's it was just what it was. Honestly, like. I've always just been this way, especially with the game of football. Like, right. And I knew it wasn't nothing. And I knew if they gave me the opportunity to prove on special teams and to curate some type of motion around the fullback, I'm, I, I would be, I would be a one. And when that role was defined, you know, just like anyone that one, when that role was defined for me, nobody else could do it better. Nobody, absolutely. Uh, speaking of roles, man, as of late, I'm not sure if you've been keeping up with it how I have, but the Steelers draft the last couple of years in free agency. Yeah. Uh, William Schultz says, uh, Schultz said, hey, Moan and Rose, how do you feel about the Steelers trying to get back to butt whooping football in the league trending towards speed and finesse? I love it personally. Uh, they went and got Darnell Washington out of uh, Georgia, big tight end, more big of a tight. blocker, extra big tackles. Tight. Yeah. yeah. They yeah. went rosy and got a first round tackle. Was yeah. not Georgia, expected. Right? Yeah. 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 Like, I, I liked it. I liked it. Right. I liked it. I, I think I like it even more. There's a lot of stuff. You know, I think when Pittsburgh moves quietly and you don't hear a lot of noise in the offseason, I think that's when we're most dangerous. Yeah. Um, I do like the fact that we're getting some, some, 
some real some some real like different some swagger you some know what dogs I'm yeah some, some some swag and some we we kind of got lost i think we kind of got lost a little bit with with the attitude that we was coming with for a while and yeah. i'm glad to see at least this draft and everything that's going on is, is putting that on the forefront you know what i mean starting i think last year too with you know the guys that they started drafting and you know uh um pickings and um yeah receiver you know what i mean my boy <laughs> everybody all them guys so these young guys is ballers and there's a reason why they all coming from the same places you know what i mean so Fact. I think that speaks to it too uh riddle me this though did you appreciate the uh the no huddle stuff we were doing because we mixed in a lot of runs especially with l bell and also connor too like having them dudes with the flexibility they had was phenomenal man the way ben could operate it i think you're talking about when we played yeah absolutely i yeah. think we were spoiled oh why i think that we had some talent that kind of changed the game in all aspects yeah i think when you talk about being in shape and you talking about like you never l bell never came out the game no he did not and he stayed with that same consistency you know what i mean that's tough to get that like yeah. that 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 slant route that AV is running is the same one in the fourth quarter. You know what I mean? So like, I think that we got spoiled in that way. So it made it, it made it what we did. And yeah. I think when you add me being an extension of the O line, I think it kind of flowed just enough to let Ben do his thing. You did no huddle. You did what I'm saying. So like, yeah. it was a real, real good attack on every aspect. You know, even when. You know, we had Martavius going deep or Wheaton. You oh, know what I'm gosh. Like, you know, even then when I first got there, we had, you know, NFL open heat. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So it, I think, you know, the, the just the offense that we were curating at that time, you know, it was it worked. And just like everything else, the game changes and the players got to change too. It's, it's weird, though, because uh, I say that a lot when it comes to seven. But if, if you look at that group, it really was like all of us. And to their own, to their own uh, 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 undoing, though, two rows, I honestly look at it now, which is why I think we're going through this reset now. They held on to us. And I can be real. I'm appreciative of the pay. OK, but they held on to my group, that old line for probably a year or two too long. When you look at the breakdown of it, like we got it was me. Then we got old quick. Yeah, as far all, as the amount of talent that we had to go chase that ring, that's that's how special well, it was. That, that line that you're talking about at that time that we needed to click, it was clicking. It was clicking. You know what I'm saying? At that time, it was the best line for maybe yeah. two or three years at a time. At, at one point, you know what I mean? Like two, three years is probably the best top five line in, in the league. Yeah, consistently. Yeah. And. Um, that's shout out to y'all. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like it wasn't a matter of holding on to y'all. I just think that when we, it, you know, I think the game changes, right? It like, did every, change. It, it get it, it just changes, and like the whole the whole game now is just sick. Like, <laughs> of course, some teams ain't gonna have fullbacks. You see these receivers that's coming out of oh college. Oh my like, god, can't be touched. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, yeah. Odds are just getting crazier and crazier, and the game is just going to continue to change. So if you can't adapt, you're going to be gone. No doubt about it. I think this is a general question, but it comes from Yurik Hunt, man. Uh, Rosie, do you get regret playing full a fullback in the NFL, and do you regret trying to play through all the injuries? The injuries thing is a unique question of that, though. You go ahead. I definitely don't regret playing fullback. Um, do I regret trying to play through all the injuries? The only injury I regret trying to play through is a stress fracture that I had my first my rookie year when yeah. I ended up breaking my foot. And that's because I didn't tell anybody that I had a you knew it? I didn't know what was wrong with my foot, but I was so scared to get my foot checked out for weeks, thinking that something was wrong. Wow. You know, and then I ended up breaking my foot the, the week before the playoffs and then my rookie year. But that's the only time. I was like, ah, I should have probably said something. But, you know, you live and you learn. I was an undrafted free agent. There was two fullbacks on the roster. I wasn't trying to show any, like. Nothing. Any type of, like, lash against my name or anything like that. So, I don't think it's smart to play through any injuries. I tell no. anybody that plays now, you know, if there's a problem, sit out. You know, Say I know something. It's hard. I know it's hard and, and, and people don't understand exactly how hard 
or what type of pressures come with that, but uh, it's not a good idea. To is, and that's, that's, I'm glad you hit on it. You were going to say this. You said the same thing that I said, man. Uh, the fear of being Wally pipped. Yeah. It's yeah. a real thing, especially when you're on the lower end of the totem pole, no matter. And I think the lower end of the totem pole means where you come in at. Like, even though I was a starter, Rose, I was still looking over my shoulder and probably had no reason to, but every day felt like, man, I got to go. Mm -hmm. And that's mm -hmm. what the injuries do to you, man. Uh, and one way or the other. Uh, on that side, though, uh, man, appreciate that, Ryan Maxwell, man. Definitely stream this as much as possible. I, I have this one for you real quick, Rose. Uh, your thoughts on Coach T. This one comes up a lot for guys that's played with him. You give your push. I've always given my spiel about him. Uh, so I wonder if ours line up, man, for the most part. Coach T. I mean, Coach T is by far one of the most unique men that I've met in my life. As far as coaching, he is definitely top, top two coaches. And, and, and just because when I started playing football – in professional football league with coach coach Tom as my coach it was the it was the coach tomalisms it was the it was the more it was more of the man i can handle the football stuff and learn as an athlete but when i was get, when i was with coach t it was like even the little sidebar conversations and stuff like that i really felt like i had somebody that was really like cared about what i had going on and and truly was making me better whether it be a little smart aleck remark or some type of, you know, humility act or something like that. But I really appreciated the way he conducted himself as a coach um, and how he how he controlled the team and how, you know, most of the time it was no – it was just no nonsense with the standard being a standard and everybody having somewhat of a very transparent work environment. Right. You know what I mean? A very – um, like I said, somewhat because, you know, obviously it's a coach player relationship. So it's always going to be a business at the end of the day, but very transparent in regards of if you really had a question or if you was really ready for the truth, you could go ask that question and get what you wanted. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, and, and I was one of coach these guys. I can't lie. I was one of coach these guys. So it was a lot of love from him and it was a lot of, you know, he knew I was going to do my job and he trusted me. And uh, I tell people all the time, like, I think anytime a coach can look you in your eyes or yell for you at a point in time for the team, yeah, I think that that shows what type of person he thinks of you. You know what I mean? And I know that Coach T respected me as a as a player and somebody that could help this team when the team needed it. So I have nothing bad to say about the, about Coach Tomlin whatsoever. I love what he's doing, and I love the attitude that comes with you know pittsburgh football no doubt about it. i think it just get kind of skewed sometimes though because um the super bowl conversation pittsburgh's mm -hmm. heavy into it like most places i'm sure cleveland would love one hey yeah. uh all atlanta would love one all these teams but you get the conversation about well first round of the playoffs and all this type of stuff like the the year-to-year -year drive the detail the discipline uh, the idea that he's known as a player coach is somebody yeah. just said that a second ago. Like, how far from the truth is that player coach conversation? And how much of everybody fall in line does that line up with? I mean, first of all, right, to win a Super Bowl, everyone has to be in line, right? Yeah. And I have no idea. I, I've only been, what, to AFC Super Championship? Yeah, I oh. played in the Super Bowl. And yeah, you you're played right. in the Super yeah. Bowl. So I, I've only been to the to the AFC Championship where it crashed at the last moment. I don't know what kind of injuries. What, yeah, I don't know what happened back then. <laughs> I still I still can't believe that game. Like New I, England in so, New England, right? In New England, man. I just remember it was just like it was just chaotic. It, it was. Just, was. I just, it, the whole thing crashed that night, and I just mm -hmm. didn't. Now, that's my first time seeing like you know player. That's when I realized the the, the extent of like how hard it was to really yeah Super Bowl because I watched the whole thing we had built. Just really, people were just completely out of character that night. You know it what was. I mean? As far as like the confusion on the sideline and stuff. So I think, like I said, you have to be on the same point to win the Super Bowl. But you know, it's tough. Like. Our conference, AFC North, I think, is the hardest conference in, in the NFL. 
personally, I I I vouch for that. You know, we got even now you got the Ravens loading up. You got Cincy doing what they do, and everybody's hoping that the Browns. You know, turn it around. Please don't turn so, it around. So Ooh. please don't turn it around. You know what I'm saying? But it's like you see what's going on too. So it's like everybody, you know, everybody just chill out on the whole, you know, let's get him out of there because there ain't no Super Bowls when, you know, in fact, you know, the, the seasons that he's having, I mean, yeah, flipping the whole seasons, 0 and 6, whatever it was last year and just becoming close, I think. You know, ultimately, you want to win a Super Bowl, but you have to be realistic too, especially as a fan. And we've gone through some down years just as as Steelers. I mean, you know, and still be above five hundred, and still being <laughs> above five hundred. So I think when we look back, I mean, who are we gonna go? Who's gonna come and coach like and do a better job? Yeah, you know I, don't, I don't know. So, so, so it's it's interesting. I, I I see Evan Wirtz has that up there, man. As far as but like you brought up something that really hit me. Like it took me back real quick. Yeah, that Patriots game in the AFC Championship. You're right. It was chaotic. It was, like it was nuts. It was the crazy. communication. I think the coaches lost their headsets. Yeah. Uh, d- what was it? Uh, 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 Le'Veon was hurt. Everybody, yeah, Le'Veon. To his, remember, his knee was hurt. His knee was hurt. Was Pounce in that game? I don't even know if Pounce was in that game. I remember. Will was playing running back. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like so it, you're exactly right. They started off the game with that flea flick, flicker down the field on mm-hmm. defense. Remember that? That's when uh it was in Amadola. Is that is oh that my who gosh? It yeah. was him. It was him. He was going crazy. So he was going crazy. I just remember people just like, what's going on? Like, there was what? really no answer. Yeah, I see Blake said A B got hurt to uh, during uh uh near the end, like that was a weird ass game, man. Yeah, that and for me, like I said, always being like somebody who who was really entrenched in the moment and realizing what's going on in my second year in the league. I had missed six games previously, so I'm already determined to show you know after my rookie year that I can come back and play. And I'm like, I'm seeing what's getting built, and then seeing that all fall, I was like, man, this this is tough. This it was. Is, this is a tough thing to do. And you, you got to have a, a very specific set of professional skills to get this done. You know what I mean? It's it's hard, man. And that, yeah, that's that's wild style, Rose. We don't we don't come to a call. I can do this with you all friggin' day, man. Yeah, yeah, that, yeah. Man. I can do this with you all day. Uh, I, I have to ask you this one because Mark brought it up too, man. Uh, what was it like blocking linebackers? Uh, back on backers, that atmosphere because it, it it's an event. It really is, it's Rose. Cool, I think, you know, at some point in time, all the technique stuff goes out the window in every position. I think at some point in time, <laughs> when, you, when you're talking about being a professional, right, and you're talking about asserting yourself on a level of dominance and respect, I think that the technique stuff goes out the window, right? And there's a point in time where you're playing football, you need to show up and play football. And somebody else is going to do the same. You know what I mean? Yeah. Whatever happens after that, you've been training for that. It's going to be over real quick, so just get it over with. You know what I mean? <laughs> That's so That's, that was my approach. You know what I mean? That's but so that, real. I, I was also I was also out there lining up going against Vinny. You know what I mean? Yeah, you said get it over quick, man. That is it, so it's, real. Because it's, it, it's going to be over. It's going to happen <laughs> whether you like it or not. You going to get your rep. You going to the atmosphere is your... already turned up. All that technique stuff is out the window, man. You just got to drop them sometimes and just do what you got to do. No doubt about it, Rosie. And and to close this thing on out, man, I got a personal question to ask you yeah. because we, we had a really tight group, man. Our five on the line, you, I'm going to throw Le'Veon in there. I'm throwing Counter in there. Um, and just the coaches, like, we had a – it's a brotherhood. I don't care if we talk every day, once a month, once a week, once a year. It's always this, right, forever. And um, the one thing that we all got to be able, be conscious of in our retirement with the bro- with our brothers is this, those, how are you? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And one thing, and I got to give credit, where is that? Al, Alejandro, Villanueva, man, said this to me one time, and I think he knew I was closer to the end, and he yeah. was thinking about it too, even though he went over to the Ravens, okay? Uh, but he said this when we were speaking about retirement one day in the cafeteria. He was like, man, Guys, like guys get it misconstrued sometimes. Like your retirement and happiness is based on your circle. 
Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like who you can communicate with. What's those conversations? Rosie, can I lean on you? And I know I can. You can do the same to me. You hit me. If I don't get you right then, I'm going to hit you right back if I got something going on. What has that circle been like for you? What has your mentals been like too, Rosie? Because football gives you the highest of the frigging high, right? Yeah. One of the only sports in America where you can fly into a city, get on like you the president, split traffic to go to a hotel, yep. right? Yeah. What has been that mental exchange for you, your mental health, man, to make it out of this thing and be able to breathe and enjoy life? I think like you said, right, you hit it on the head. You're dealing with the NFL, which is the number one organization in the world, one of the most powerful businesses to date, right? You know, right. I think there's a couple of steps to healing, right? I think yep. there's you have to go through it. I think you have to go through it long enough to realize who is there. Who is my circle? You yep. know what I'm saying? Like I have to, you have to be in that space long enough to realize that some people ain't gonna hit you up no more. You know, you you don't need to hit up some people anymore. You just simply, uh, you just simply don't. You know what I mean? And the people who will come and rise out of that are your family, are your your friends and your loved ones. And I think I'm at a spot now that where you know I've gone through you know some real depressing times after the game. Did you? And, uh, uh, and uh, just because it happened so fast, and I was just like, wow, like, but my whole, I've already talked about my mental, my, my mindset while I was playing. So I made some decisions that I was able to really fall back on. And okay. even with, then I fall back on those those investments and such. And I still think like, damn, it's tough for me. So I wonder what it's like for my brother who didn't make these, these, these type of plays, right? So I think it's that aspect. And I think once you wait it out long enough or you go through it and you heal yourself, then the true natural relationships, the natural things that you invested your time, the natural relationships you invested your time in and potential businesships and partnerships from years ago that come tenfold and, and come back into fruition because you just handled yourself with the right, you know, you humble at all times. You never know who you was going to meet while you was playing and, I, I sit back knowing that I, I made the right decisions. I sit back knowing that I, you know, a lot of people got a lot of love for me and yeah. uh, I got a lot of love for people. So, you know, coming to grips with your career and how it ended or or whatever happened at the end is a mandatory, but I'm proud of what I did. Uh, I'm happy about it. Um, my resume is, you know, is over now, but I'm, I can sit on it and, and, and happy and know that there's still more to come, like outside of football. So, you know, I, I got my hand in a, a lot of different things as always. So I'm excited about the future, you know. No doubt about it. It it, it can be a struggle. Mm-hmm. Um, A lot of the times, like you said, and somebody asked that question earlier, what was your mindset? Like, how did you get ready for stuff? Like, most of the times you just wired that way. Mm-hmm. And actually getting out of the game, like you said, having that reset of reality of, hey, I'm just Ramon. Hey, I'm yeah. just Roosevelt. Yeah, that's uh, it do take some time sometimes, mm-hmm. man. And mm-hmm. that uh, and and us being strong minded, <laughs> it, it really does. Like you said, you had to come to the, some realization. Like you got to just let go of some stuff. That's yeah. hard though, Rosie. It's hard. It's hard, but you know, it's it's hard, but it's necessary and it's mandatory, right? Like. You know, to walk around as a professional football, you're walking around with a lot, right? Yeah. You're walking around with a lot that you don't even think about what people don't know you're walking around with, whether that be an injury, whether that be a money situation, whether that be a family situation, or whether that just be a you scared to keep your job situation. Like you walking around with a lot of stress, you know what I'm saying? So just not having that first, you are able to be light and then you're able to heal yourself, right? Yeah. Like, Cause now that's gone. So now what's really the issues? What's really going to bring me happiness? You know, it was really going to slow it down for me and allow me to, to make the right decisions and slow it down. Just and slow down this life thing. Just like I was able to slow down the football thing. Right. Yeah. Cause you have to be good at football. You have to be able to slow it down. Right. Right. Be able to be good at life or to make the right business decisions or family decisions. You have to be able to slow it down. So, when you remove that extra, you become lighter and you'll be able to slow it down. It's my opinion. You know, that's how I've treated it and that's how I'm acting on it. You know, that's a word, Rosie. That's a word, man. Love, you know, as always.
I'm gonna have to actually take that one. Slow life down. I I, I master. I mean, think about it, Mo. You used to play guard, right? You, yeah. you have to slow that 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 two seconds down. You do. If you slow it down. If you slow that two seconds down more than the defense line slows it down, you're gonna win the rep. I'm gonna win that rep. You're 100 correct, Rose. Hey man, that's why you my day one. No question, bro. I appreciate you having me on. I appreciate all the love. I've been watching all the love and the family and. Uh, you know, always, brother, I'm going to support you everywhere I can. So, No doubt, man. From uh, from Columbus to Tennessee, you've been at my house. I got to come up to yours. It's up yeah, past man. Mexico gotta... City. We kicked it there. We everywhere. We everywhere. everywhere. <laughs> that was a good time, Rosie. Everywhere. But, dog, I'm going to wrap with you after this one, man. I appreciate your time, your conversation, yeah. and the love we spread to one another, man. Rosie, appreciate, appreciate you, my guy. Love. All love, my brother. I just got glasses today, y'all. That's it. What are you doing? <laughs> what are you doing? I, I, you hey. off the show and you put me on after the credits? Get you the are surprised. <laughs> <laughs> I want, that was so good. I told y'all Rosie was going to be good. How I I, I've never been more wrong. I mean, I, he, his interviews with, with us, with reporters, were always real short. Real, and, I'm, and you're like, no, I'm telling you, he's going to be great. Like, I, wow. told you, I told you Rosie was going to be good, man. I, the superstar guys will get them dudes, I promise you. But the Rosies, the story, That's like, real. he became a substitute teacher for a year. Yeah. DK. I know. You you get the glitz. Now you see the other side of it, man. I'm, I'm glad, Ro Rose. That was awesome by Rosie. And he That's opened up a lot. Beautiful. Beautiful stuff. Let's let's do it. Let's do a regular old show tomorrow, Moan. No doubt about it, DK. I see you, my brother. Be good. All right.